All right, so the next point I wanna make here about abrasives and vapor honing is the fact that we can mix abrasives in a vapor hone cabinet. So you can mix glass beads and aluminum oxide together in the machining world where CNC machinists are trying to smooth tool path marks, maybe do some light deburring and prep for anodizing. Obviously the glass beads there are giving you a really nice finish on the part, but you have the 220 aluminum oxide there at 5% and that's gonna do a little bit of the cutting and burr removal on that piece and do a little bit of the smoothing on the surface. So obviously dry blasting, you cannot mix abrasives effectively. Um, there's no way to do that in a vapor honing system. You can dump those abrasives in, they will mix completely and they will mix um, in uniform. You will not have heavy areas of aluminum oxide or heavy areas of glass bead, they will mix. Um, with a very good consistency in uniform. And again, dry blasting cannot do that ever, so we have a huge advantage there when you need to mix abrasives for an application. All right, so another huge benefit of vapor honing versus dry blasting is the fact that being flow-based, which we talked about in the beginning, following the peak in the valley of a part. This does a couple things for us. Following the peak in the valley or the topography of the part, we get a very clean surface because we're able to clean the little valleys versus the peaks as well. Also being flow based, we're not removing those peaks tremendously, so we're not changing the surface and the integrity and the functionality of the part. We're just again flowing and running over that surface, whether it's aluminum oxide, silicon carbide, glass bead, we're still following the topography, of, the topography of the surface. So that's where a lot of times we run into problems where we're trying to smooth maybe a really rough surface and we would have to use a bigger particle to be able to hit the top of that peak versus go down into the valley of that surface. So obviously there's advantages to being able to follow the topography, but sometimes when you're trying to smooth the part even more, if it's a very rough surface, it's very difficult to do because you have to use a very large bead in doing so. But hopefully that helps a little bit about following the topography of the surface and the effectiveness behind that, specifically in coating preparation.